but that you learn the law and you learn to analyze the law and you learn to see its limits and you practice it not only with your intellect but also with your heart my fa my mother who was my role model told me that if I am a lawyer, I can be anything. So, ever since I've been... I was playing in the streets outside our house. During those days, we had no gadgets, you know, in the 1960s. We played outside. The moon was bright. I played with the boys in my street. So, I played all of these street games. And... Um, so ever since uh, that, at that early age, I already wanted to be a lawyer. Although I didn't know what a lawyer was. But I saw my mother, who was a lawyer and a board member, a politician. And I saw that people came to our house and asked for her advice and then asked for food and asked for help when they were sick and all of that. Our gates was always open until the pandemic when my mother was bedridden. So, you have to have a role model. Because if you don't have a role model, you don't have your true north. And you don't get the right guidance. And you should always ask for guidance from people who have more experience. And your extended family. Because maybe you're the first lawyer in your family. So your parents cannot teach you how to practice. I had a lot of advantage because my father was a judge. And a sugar farmer, but mainly a judge. I was summa cum laude in Siliman University. And then cum laude valedictorian in MLQU law. And uh, he was really smart. I mean, he could... I mean, not just in the books, he was smart. He was smart. He ran an ele electric plant. <laughs> he knew how to fix sockets. He knew how to fix cars. I think those are the really smart people, no? So girls, don't ever, ever date a boy who doesn't even know how to mend his socks or, you know, cook his breakfast. I mean, it's... these days, if you have, don't have other skills aside from just being well-educated, then you're at a disadvantage. Now, that explains why, as you have read about me, and as you have seen me, that uh, I'm quite street smart. Because I was raised that way. And uh, I'm not advising you to do the same, because your career may be different. Your career track will be different from mine. Because, you know, your backgrounds are different. So you... you But I think the very basic thing is that you want to be a lawyer because it is such a difficult thing, you know, to study and sleep only four hours a day if you want to be in the honors class, um, if you want to be top ten in your class. Which, by the way, I was in the top ten in my class. I just forgot to say. But I also drank a lot when I was in the College of Law. Uh, but, you know, don't, don't copy my lifestyle because you carry on. Your times, your, these, these days are different. And <clears throat> so I'm saying you study law, you have to be really disciplined. So if you don't want it, you can just quit if you have other choices. I also uh, advise uh, at least two uh, female students, daughters of my close friends who wanted to quit uh, law school in UP when I was their professor. And I told, because they had other talents, it's very hard to be a lawyer, to choose to be a lawyer when you're versatile. If you can act, you can sing, you can, you know, if you can do other things like maybe run a business. And so, at a certain time of your, of your four years, uh, you, some of you might have that question at a crossroads. And so you must really carefully think about it. What I advise the two girls, my former students, 
is that uh, I know you have the luxury of changing roads because, well, you don't, you don't, you don't pay board and lodging, 